so we have a sex therapist coming to the show today. And I'm excited. I know you're excited. But I heard she's got a sweet rack on her. Too. God damn. She's going to watch this. <laughs> oh. Dr. Kate, I am sorry that he said that. It's true. You're a beautiful woman. He's a sex fiend, which is why we're so excited to have you here because we need help. I need sorting out. He needs a lot of sorting out. So do I, though. We both are sexual people, and it has hindered and helped our lives, I think. Correct? That's a beautiful way of putting it. Austin, I can't hear myself in my headphones. Austin's going to be very drunk come next episode. <laughs> Leo, yeah, we quick gotta, plug. We're punishing. I just got the Danny Mullen live at Ford's theater sweater. It's beautiful. It is screen printed. The quality is bananas. It looks great. Check it out. There are a couple more hoodies left. And by a couple more, I think there are like 80 left, which uh, 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 you okay over there, Austin? Guys, this is going to be a collector's item one day, so you should definitely cop one of these. I want to redo all my merch in this screen print. The quality is yeah, it's making me get hard. Oh, wow. Are you sure it's not Dr. Kate? Uh, no, uh, that's more. God, I'm going to have to talk to her about this. If Getting an erection for my merchandise is an issue. <laughs> so what better way to start that with some sex stories? What do you think? Yeah. Man? Some Leo, sex work stories? Leo and I were talking about some interesting, juicy stuff we could hop into before this broad shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> fucking come, dude. I'm sorry, Dr. Kate. Uh, again. But uh, yeah, we need help. And thank God you're coming. The, go, the, the story I'm going to tell, you want to flip a coin to see who goes first? Rock, sure. paper, scissors. Here All we right. go. One, two, three. Leo I goes go first, first, I suppose. Yes. Where were you working at the time? I was working at, I mean, you, I, you guys have heard a lot of the Waterworld stories. They weren't nothing like really that great. They were just taking a lot of, you know, I would just take girls home after the show, like that were that watched the show and did the meet and greet and we'd bang. My favorite one, maybe the Bra Brazilian mom I banged in the ass. That was pretty nice. Her daughter didn't come along, though, but her daughter was 19. It was nice. They were both kind of hitting on me after the show, and then she flew back to Brazil the next day. That was fun, but that's I, I'm going to go with an older story because I was more of a nobody. I was just working at Canon, and I mean, I was, you know, Canon, tall. the camera company? Canon, I, yeah, no, it's the same company, but they, they're copier division. So I used to sell copiers business to business. That was my first, one of my first jobs. Was it, your it, boss Japanese? My, no, the, uh, it was kind of like a Canon, it was a dealership. So yes, the the copiers came from Japan, but they were just sold here in, you know, it was actually Santa Clarita. Leo, did you have any contact with a real live Japanese person? No. Nah, any of the any, higher ups? None of the higher ups. I'm dude. sorry to digress I'm sorry. really quickly. Yeah. I've been wondering, you know, a company like Outback Steakhouse, mm -hmm. how far up the management chain do you have to go until you hit your first Aussie? Your first Aussie? Uh, Probably, I would say, you probably never even encounter an Aussie. That's how the corporate ladder is. That's why it sucks. Like, that's why you, corporate corporations, you, you the service, you try to get something done with a corpse. Uh -huh. You never get anything done. You call them, and you just get India. Leo, when you worked at Canon, yeah. I want your supervisor to come out of the elevator wearing a full samurai suit of <laughs> armor, and I want him to be clutching a katana. And just, and just, that's how we test the copier. He just fucking hits the copier with a katana and, and that's it, how we, nothing happens. And that's how he motivates you to oh, sell more of those motherfuckers. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, man, it was a good copier. To be honest, it's, it's one of the only times I sold a product that I believed in was the, the Canon copier because it was great. It was a great copier. Anyway, you hear that kids, if you're in the market, if you're in the market, let's see, we sold mainly to lawyers and accountants. Doctors were just assholes about buying. I never sold one to a doctor. I could never, their personalities, mm -hmm. they didn't want, they didn't wheel and deal. Like lawyers, I'd be like, listen, your cost per copy is here. I can get it to here. And they'd be like, let's fucking do it. You know, yeah. they, the lawyers were the best. They were probably just looking for a flat surface to do coke off of. Exactly. Dude, you're so right about the lawyers, man. They were party fucking animals. I know. I know. So let's talk about the sex. The sex. All right. So this was one of it was it wasn't even sex, but it was one. It's one of my you know it's one of my all time favorite random hookups because it's up on the masturbation ladder uh, because it was so interesting and weird at the same time. You so, jerk off to it a lot. I jerk off to it a lot, or have through the years. So there was uh they had an intern, uh, a nineteen year old intern Ooh. that they shouldn't have put around me because you know she started heavily hitting on me. I was about twenty. Five, 26 uh -huh. at the time. Uh -huh. I was kind of a stud. I was not kind of a stud. I was a complete stud. I had short hair and stuff, uh -huh. and I didn't have a beard or anything, but uh -huh. I, I was a different kind of stud, more of a baseball douche kind of yeah. stud. It's you like know? putting your pet rabbit in with your pet boa constrictor in the same tank. There you go. So then there was the the receptionist girl who was 23 who also would hit on me, but she had a boyfriend, so it was just light flirtation. It was kind of like a fun 
flirty kind of relationship. And then she became friends with the 19 year old intern. One day we're at the office and it's like 4 PM. I was never really at the office. It was kind of a job you did out in the field, but I had to do some paperwork. So I came to the office and it was just them too. So I was like, oh, isn't this great? Cool. So the 19 year old starts kind of, you know, she sits next to me and she starts grabbing my cock. Basically. That's unprofessional. It was very unprofessional. There was no, no bosses, no cameras, just us three. Uh, I was hoping there were no cameras, but yeah. So she just started grabbing my cock, right? The girl, the, the receptionist, young lady, the receptionist sees this and then says, well, you might as well, you know, do something about it, or you might as well finish the job. And I'm like, thank you for suggesting that. That's crazy. And I'm like, I guess. Yeah. I was like, yeah, if you want to like have a little fun, I'm down to go in the back room. And she's like, no, you guys could just do it there. And I'm like, you're okay with, with her finishing me off right here uh-huh. while you basically watch uh-huh. and or see. And you guys are on a sofa in a big conference Where it's, room it's in a, the main it's a desk, lobby? It's a desk that can you can see under the desk. So it was just like a normal, like a like a, a large desk with two drawers here, but then it was flat and there was no like covering on the, on the front side. So she could just see directly through Copy. to my pants. Continue. And she was over there on like, a, on like a, it was a long kind of office and she was kind of, maybe like 10 feet away on her own desk facing to the left. And so she could just turn her head and see me at the desk and this, this girl. So this 19 year old blew me in Ooh. front Ooh. of the receptionist girl. And um, she kind of had a little verbiage. She would like, she said a few things while it was happening to kind of help it along to encourage the 19 year old to suck a better dick. Yeah, exactly. And, and then the next day told me that she went home and fucked the shit out of her uh, boyfriend. Uh, uh-huh. so yeah, that's, that's a hop on the, it's very high up on the, uh, the jack off meter for me. I'm disappointed in you. Why? You put your career in jeopardy. <laughs> At Canon, I did it many, many times at Canon. And then look, I'd had the same behavior at Waterworld and it didn't work out in my favor. But only when I got famous, because before that, nobody gave a fuck about me pulling my cock everywhere until I had a little name. And then people started caring. But yeah, it was insane. You can basically be a child molester and a child (laughs) murderer as long as you're not famous. Yeah. I was talking to, I'm not going to say in what field this guy works, Mm -hmm. but he's in one of the jobs that I interact with that helps out YouTubers and content creators. And I asked about featuring his name in one of my videos because of his role and something significant that happened. And he said, no, no, no. I kind of want to be under the radar. And I thought instantly, this guy's a bro. This guy grabbed a bunch of titties in college. Mm -hmm. This guy is petrified of getting me too'd. Absolutely. And that's, you know, if you're not petrified about getting me too, you haven't lived. Uh-huh. Austin oh, can barely that. put his head down and sleep at night. <laughs> I told you all before, I'm going to end up me three. Me three. You're going to have to make a whole dude, new Dude, as up. long as, dude, all I'm saying is like, if if you're accused of rape, then okay, yeah, that's serious shit. And you, you, you're you probably, maybe there's something happened. You know, sometimes the case, she, she, they, women lie. Everybody lies. But I mean, a lot of the times when it's it's something like he hit on me aggressively, like who gives a fuck, dude? Guys are gonna girls hit on guys aggressively. Men have to, men want something and they go for because that's what they're taught to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then and then if that if you want to say that that guy deserves to have his life shattered because he hit on you, I mean, yeah. that's a little bit. We've selfish. gotten into this, yeah, many, many times. So we don't have to many go. Times. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. about to get all fire and brimstone and launch yeah, I'm a sure. Me Too tirade. There's nothing that pisses you off more than the Me Too, elegant, you know, the Me, Me Too movement. And Leo and I were just talking. I finished up the Tony Robbins Money book on finances. Fantastic, by the way. Not just for its information on what to do with your investments, your bank accounts, but also for the life advice offered mm-hmm. on almost every page. And Leo informs me over here from the left side of the couch, you know, Tony Robbins got Me Too'd, right? Mm-hmm. I pull it up as Google... And I see right away, first thing, NY Times. Tony Robbins has to apologize for saying women use Me Too's as a means of gaining significance. <laughs> and maybe this makes me a bad person, but the first thing I said to Leo is fucking legend. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a, you know, he's, he's a guy that's changed so many people's lives. And, you know, you have to tend to maybe agree with him on some of the points that he makes in this. He had some logical points behind it. Of course, we all, all, we, we, there were some things that were definitely fucked up in yeah. Hollywood and some people, some guys in power t- abusing that power. But at the same time, there were many things that, that were 
very tragic about the Me Too movement. Yeah. You know? I'm about to launch into Awakening the Giant Within, a Tony Robbins title. Mm-hmm. I wonder which chapter is going to be about groping girls at seminars. That's going to be my favorite one. He, that, refer that's refer back to that one yeah, semi-annually. Yeah. <laughs> that is what he's accused of. Uh, I got a story to tell. All right. Speaking of workplace uh, misuse of power, not really. I'll tell you why. When I was a bouncer in San Francisco, I got quite a bit of pussy. And it's a real head scratcher to me because in San Francisco, the median income is like $259,000 a year. All the girls that came to my bar, it was in the Marina District, are ex sorority chicks, mm. ex Ivy League girls, girls who work at Salesforce. Girls who work at Facebook, Google. So you wouldn't think a guy who's making $13 an hour working two nights a week at a bar as a security guard is going to be on their radar as far as getting pussy. Here's how it works, though. I well, think. you're a handsome man. Thank you, Leo. Of course. I had a buddy tell me this once who was also a professional bouncer for the early stages of his life. He's now quite a wealthy man. He said that when you're working in nightlife, it's like you're quote, too cool for school is how he put it. All these investment banker dudes who have flush bank accounts and and admirable net worths, the problem is when they get into the bar, they're drunk, they've been pent up at their desk for fucking 70 hours that week working, so they're desperate with the chicks. They're, oh, where where are you on Instagram? How much money? Where do you work? You know, I got really good stock options in my company. (laughs) They stink of desperation. That's so true. They stink. Do you want to come back? You got to see my apartment. It's great. There's a beautiful view of the Bay Bridge, baby. We can go tomorrow and go to the museum, then get mimosas. Then we we can go out into the lawn of the marinas and throw a first. But I'm sitting over there. Totally have a buddy like that. That's funny. I'm chewing some big league chew. (laughs) I'm fucking kicking back. I'm clowning around, making jokes. Yeah. The guy I worked with was Kyle from Jiu-Jitsu. Him and I are working on our Osoto Garis out there on the cement when we got a break between people coming in. So we're not have a, having to actively check IDs. The girls are attracted to that. Like, who are these relatively handsome guys that just mm-hmm. don't give a fuck? It's true. It's true. If you can present that kind of demeanor and if you can fake it, because oftentimes, yeah, you, you when you are desperate for a girl, we all, we've all been there. We've all been desperate for some some ass. Mm-hmm. You got to present that uh, that demeanor where you don't seem to need it. You just are there to talk to them. This brunette girl comes up to me one night. She's drunk with her friends. I'm sober as a seagull. Uh, I guess seagulls aren't the most sober of birds. Yeah. Sober as a falcon. That's better. That's better. Seagulls are digging through trash. Yeah, they're they're the hobos of the oh, yeah. flight. They're the Venice Beach. Yeah, birds, exactly. You know? no. I take this girl. She's flirting with me. She says she wants to kiss. She's drunk. I ask my supervisor, Kyle. I say, hey, Kyle, can I take this girl over into the alcove? The alcove was a, it was a cut in the buildings. It was between us and another bar down the street where I would take girls on shift to make out feel up their titties, exchange phone numbers, do whatever unprofessional shit I wanted to do out of view of the security camera overlooking the bar. Oh, wow. And I really don't know why I was that paranoid of the security camera. My manager was a guy named Miguel, and he was a notorious alcoholic, and he was could barely stand up by the end of the shifts. You'd, you'd go collect your tip money at 2.15 a.m., this guy would have to fucking hold on to the cash register for physical support. Oh, my God. You'd have to count your tips thrice. That's not professional. It wasn't professional at all. Yeah, so I really didn't have to worry about the cameras, but well, how, how much Leo, um, average night of tips? Um, what would you make? I was exaggerating when I said I only made thirteen bucks. Mm-hmm. There were the tips at first when I worked there were about. Did I ever get tips? No, I got paid in cash. It was hourly. Hmm. This isn't that interesting, but I guess I made twenty five dollars to start hourly. That's really good. Really good, yeah. and they'd pay us out in cash, so we'd have to go get it out in cash. Oh, that's but great. then it jumped up to the end of that job, like twenty eight an hour. That was great. But the problem is, it was only two nights a week, so you couldn't gotcha. make a living doing it. But it was a really good supplement to another job, and right. as far as pussy, it was a fantastic supplement to another it's job. A great job to have. Man. I'm in the alcove with this girl. I reach down the front of her pants and I'm fingering her pussy. <laughs> I'm sucking her titties. I actually have pictures of it on my Patreon. I yeah. swear, people, these plugs aren't intentional. It's up on my Patreon. It is. It's it a is. story, yeah. and there's there's pictures of me making out with her. I say, hey, baby, after this shift, I'm going to take you to my Ford Fusion 2006. I'm going <laughs> to pull out my penis, and I'm going to make you do things to it. And she says, okay, I'm down. So I go back out. I carry out the rest of my shift like a professional. 
not that professional. Yeah, I bet not. The guy I worked with, Kyle, mm. he is a rock star bouncer. I came back to his apartment. That's where I would sleep because between when I lived in Las Vegas and when I moved to LA, this was in the very early days of my YouTube channel, I was staying with my parents in Sacramento and I'd commute out for the weekends. This was about a three-month window. I would stay with him in the Tenderloin in San Francisco. He had a 20-gallon fish tank full of fake IDs he'd confiscated. Wow. He could tell by smell, I swear to God. He had an extra sensory ability, perhaps even, to detect fake IDs. A fish tank full of them. Wow. The only trick I had is really cheap fake IDs. If you bend them in your hand, sort of like you're shuffling cards, you get that arc bend, the laminate will come up. There'll oh, be wow. a crease down the middle if you do that. Huh. That's a dead giveaway for fake IDs. Also, South Carolina, the most faked fake ID state. Wow. Why is that? I don't know. It's just a trend. It's something to look out for. Interesting. Your bouncer spidey senses get tingling when somebody comes up with South Carolina. There are certain ones that are harder to make than others. New York's the toughest to fake because it's got peach fuzz on it. Well, At least the old text. one. Next. I think uh, we might have a doctor. You want to yeah, come grab her? Here. I'm going to go grab her. Grab her. I'll continue telling my story. She might like the end of it. After my shift, I take this broad out to my Ford Fusion 2006. There's really not much more to tell, so I suppose this is good timing. She blows me. This is tough. The doctor's going to walk in and hear some crude shit going on. Austin, she blew me, and I... Not only did I not shower for the six or seven hours of my shift, obviously, I don't think I'd showered that entire day prior. Also, I used to train Brazilian jiu-jitsu before I'd go into work, so I might have had a full BJJ workout under my belt also. Literally under my belt. If I don't wash my, my balls like 30 minutes before someone's like going to blow me, they're probably going to throw up. I'm glad you and I can relate on that. I thought it was because I just got big nuts, or one of my nuts is super big. I thought that might have been a problem. That's why there's an odor down there sometimes. If I sleep... Can you relate to me on this? When I sleep, and a steady night of sleep, eight hours, and I get up in the morning to piss, sometimes I smell a little funk coming off my balls just when I piss in the morning. Yeah, I, if I'm playing RuneScape for too long... Oh, no. And I'm just sitting in my chair, I can smell my stench from my balls like coming up, and then I know, okay, you need to take a shower. It's been like 48 hours. Appreciate that. I appreciate that you and I can relate. Oh, here comes uh, our, our doctor. Anyway, so here is... Oh, wow, beautiful. Holy shit. We have a chair for you and some water because, uh, you know, we, we managed to do that for you. So wow. You Hello. Welcome. I'm okay. We are, this is definitely uh, a guy's house. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm Our so studio sorry. is very I'm unprofessional. Heavily, heavily for, uh, for that already. But yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Kate was the name? Yes, Kate. I, I have, I can read her uh, some of her qualifications if you'd like. But if you want, I, you can go ahead and just. Tell us who you are. Well, well, actually, Leo, I was wrapping up a story. I'm really oh, okay. Sorry. We'll keep going. Oh my God, <laughs> this is quite the story. We were telling, we were telling some uh, some interesting stories right before you got here. I'm it's probably gonna... in the worst <laughs> stage of the story too. Oh boy, the part of the story that's left is literally: I went out to my Ford Fusion 2006. Oh God, received a blowjob after having not showered mm. for 18 hours. 18, and then made love to this girl in the passenger seat of my car. We we decided it was a good idea to tell our best sex stories at work before you came in, but we also we're we're both sexual beings and we, we need a lot of help doctor so <laughs> so thank god that you're here because we are we are in need of help yeah it sounds like there's some hygiene stuff going on the hygiene i might yeah. not be the right doctor <laughs> there was there were some hygiene issues austin and i were bonding over <laughs> i can assure you though they've been taken care of no i actually haven't showered today fuck <laughs> you stay away from me your last name could you say it for me yes balustrary Balestrieri. Balestieri. Oh, Balestieri. Mm -hmm. oh, is that it Italian? Italian? It is Italian. Oh, it's a beautiful Italian. But Dottavio, I'm, I'm Italian as well. See? That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look very Italian. I am. Very nice. I am Italian. Very nice. Um, well, yeah, go ahead. If you want to introduce yourself and, and say a little bit about, I know that you're you're a clinical psychologist, yeah. an expert in in, um, in sex, sex addiction, I believe, and uh, and just couples therapy, right? Yeah. So thanks for the, mm -hmm. for the intro. I'm Kate Balestrieri. I'm a clinical and forensic psychologist and I spent about 
I would say 10 years working in the prison systems with oh sex God. offenders and doing evaluations for court. Mm. I'm going to have you profile Austin later. I've yeah, <laughs> been pretty suspicious. We're, we're, not, we're suspicious about that one over there. <laughs> and then I moved into private practice, and, mm. and now I really focus on treating a whole myriad of issues related to the intersection of mental health and sex and wow. relationships. So... Yeah, that's. This is going to be great. Yeah. We're very impressed. We need this. We might need you to come back often because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, you know, we have a mostly male audience, and I think that it's a great, it's great to have this, these kind of talks, mm -hmm. uh, because it's important to to understand your sexuality yeah. and what's going on, especially we're, we're eighteen to thirty four. Kind is of, huge for our demographic and. Yeah. And doctor, we come in here all the time and we give ourselves these bro diagnoses. Uh -huh. Right. You like how I pluralize that correctly? I'm smart. Yeah, and I'm uh, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We don't. We don't. We probably need to be slammed up in an institution just like your old patients. I tell you what. Wow, that's that's crazy. You 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 have such crazy experiences from that. I can't imagine. I mean, literally, if it's happened, uh, you know, in the panoply of human behavior, I've panoply. seen it. Holy I've observed shit. it. You're gonna. This guy's gonna fall in love with you by the end of this, uh, <laughs> this show. <laughs> Well, he, he loves he's he was a screenwriting. Uh, well, he loves the language, you know, oh. and the way you use that word is, oh. you know, if you want to thumb through some poetry books with me after this show, I'd yeah. love to. <laughs> when was the last time you showered? <laughs> Today you is shower, Monday, <laughs> so it's going to be Wednesday of last week. <laughs> yes that sounds like good poetry mm. so you've seen it all uh wow i can't imagine what that that's got to be very very difficult to to manage how do you do that do you you just kind of have an attitude about it that you know like you do you how do you how do you look at something like that and not let it you know how do you well, like, talk about the like, child like, molesters like, yeah how okay. do you how do you not lose sleep how do you not lose sleep over over the store the things you have to deal with you've dealt with i mean i think okay when you talk to an emergency room physician, they probably tell you the first few shifts that they have are pretty like awe-inspiring. They see gunshot wounds, lots mm -hmm. of blood, lots of guts, lots of acute issues. And then over time, they go in and it's sort of like, okay. Gotcha. You know, There's even a sense of humor about it sometimes. I heard the ER has a sense of humor. Yeah. But. Well, anybody that works in a really acute setting, I think mm -hmm. there's that initial period of like, wow, this is intense. Mm -hmm. And then after you are around it for a while, it's like, oh, okay. You know, you just habituate to different things over gotcha. time. And one of the things that really helped me, and I, a lot of people might disagree with what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. but every single person that I've worked with is a human, a living, breathing human. So mm -hmm. no matter their issues or what I'm treating them for, mm -hmm. there's some sort of spark of humanity there that you can connect with and work with. And so I try to find that piece, right? That little spark, that gem mm -hmm. of, of um, humanity that, mm -hmm. you know, was their original self before oh, they started doing all the stuff that they were that's that's reprimanded for that's yeah. a fantastic way to look at that wow. yeah i have nothing else to add that was beautiful. yeah that was beautiful <laughs> that was really beautiful um we thought we could share some of our we are very sexual beings i both me and danny uh, i feel like uh you know we do this comedy youtube stuff mm -hmm. but it's you know i know danny does it mainly for the attention he gets from women mm. i have done everything in my life for, for the attention i get <laughs> from women uh you know from reality shows to everything in my life, athletics and everything. But yeah, we, we wanted to, sh we have some peculiar sexual, th I guess, at, what would you call it, Danny? Sexual proclivities. Yeah, there we go. Mm, good word. Good Thank word. You. That's yeah, what I'm here for. He has great, yeah, he absolutely great vernacular. But yeah, but uh, you know, and, and we wanted to, your take, maybe we could go back and forth and see, you know, okay. you can tell us kind of what you think or what, you know, what, what's the cause <laughs> What's the cause of our, our uh, you know, and we both are in relationships. And okay. let me let me oh, start man. this out. I think no. the first person we should focus our attention on is a little producer Austin over there. Yeah, he's young and he's he's not set in his ways like we are. You because know, doctor, he's right now in the midst of a phase that I know oh too well. When I was in my early twenties, I'd make love to a woman, I'd kiss her on the forehead, and there'd be a little of a postcoital cuddling. And then I'd mm -hmm. kick her out and I never want to talk to her again. Mm -hmm. I've since gotten over that. That's not a thing I do anymore. I'm in a relationship. But Austin, every girl he has sex with, granted most of them seem to be addicted to pills or have some sort of psychological issue, but a lot of them are quite beautiful. Sure. And he doesn't even want a second date. He's not. How old it you is now? a problem. You're 21? Uh, I'm, or? No, I'm, I'll be 21 in December, yeah. Yeah. What do you think that is? 
I mean, I think it's just the deadly disease of being 21. That's true. And there it is. Figuring out a lot about who you are and mm-hmm. what you want. And mm. if it's not a problem for Austin and it's not a problem for the people that he's having sex with, then mm. really it's not a problem. There we go. It's usually a problem for them. They're usually not happy that I ghost them afterwards. Well, doctor. Well, okay, so there's <laughs> can that. Can we make eight-inch eight dick jokes about Austin? Oh, in front God, of yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He, he boasts a lot about he his boasts manhood. About it. He boasts about his manhood all the time. I had one of my sexual encounters call into the show. Yes. Yes. It, it was. It was. <laughs> and it's was, been a few weeks since I've talked to her. She was a horrible yeah. drug addict, to be completely yeah. honest. And now she is in rehab. So we're hoping Ooh. that she gets better. And Yes, but, let's hope. Yeah, let's hope, right? Yeah, but listen, as long as there's consent, everybody's on the up and up. Everyone knows what they're there for. Mm-hmm. Casual sex is a great thing, and it can be incredibly liberating. Mm-hmm. And I think too many people have hangups about it. But where it gets really murky is when someone's not being honest about their motives, or they're not really um, practicing any kind of safe, boundaried sexual play. And gotcha. You know, that's when it really gets dicey and people get unhappy or they feel uncomfortable after. So the, you basically is being, being honest and upfront from the very beginning is, is what the way to, to go about your... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So many people that I talk to will say things like, God, I wish they would have just said all they wanted was something casual because I totally would have been down for that. Mm -hmm. But instead, they go through this giant labyrinth of, you know, shenanigans to try to convince them that there's some, I don't know, um, chivalrous person. And then it turns out to be a farce when, in fact, casual sex would have been great from the start. So I think, you know, people just don't want to be douchebags, but then they end up being douchebags. They end up being douchebags. God, that's something that I feel like a lot of men out there, the guys that watch our podcast go through i mean mm-hmm. i have two sisters so i've always i've always kind of i've not hated but i've disliked guys that will be super charming mm-hmm. maybe even use the i love yous to just to sleep with women mm-hmm. in the end that that's what hurts and changes you know lives and things like that but yeah. but yeah being honest and forthright about wanting to just have casual sex is not a terrible thing no it's a great thing i mean right. think about how much better the sex is if you get to enjoy it guilt free Oh, yes. Guilt-free <laughs> sex. Right, Danny? One of the best things in life. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just going to be uh, forthcoming about this. I did go into the backyard and urinate just now. Oh, that's totally okay. <laughs> he can't urinate in that bathroom because it will it will cause a, a disturbance in the, yeah, in the sound. I don't I don't want to pick up on audio. And also, I don't want to gross out the good doctor. That's she, going to doctor, say. I'm so sorry about this. I, we, I, want, I told him to wear something nice today. That's why I'm wearing a collared shirt. Mm. But he... He's he is who he is, well, and he wants to be. He's he's Danny Mullen, and mm-hmm. that's that's who he is. He's he's upfront about who he is. I'll he should be much. authentic. He is, he's authentic to himself. Yeah. that's one thing you can say about him. <laughs> There's a lot you can learn from me. Did we get Austin's issue sorted out? Yes, she says that he's 21 and is he has to be more honest and he can't. Uh, you know, yes, it's okay to have casual sex and figure. And he, once he figures out who he is, he's gonna he's gonna have a relationship. But what is that? Is it just the young men? Their body is telling them, hey, you're at peak fertility right now. Get that dick of yours into as many holes as possible (laughs) so you can carry out the human species. Is that what it is? And then when you get a little bit older, you start getting into more long-term mating, settling down, taking care of what you have. How much time do we have? We have uh, until 7 o'clock. We have until 7? Okay. Yeah, seven. There's, there's, full a lot, hour. there's a lot in what you just said, right? Yeah. So there are elements that are biologically driven, right? Mm-hmm. The younger men are like 18, 20, early 20s. They definitely are more primed for more sex. They mm-hmm. have a biological tick that says, go, go, go. Get it. Make as many little use as you can, mm-hmm. right? But... I think we have to really remember that we are also social beings. So, so much of our relationship to sex is rooted in how we are socialized to understand it and our identity in relation to sex. So a lot of men grow up with this idea of you are more masculine if you have sex with more people. Mm. And so that drives just as much of their sexuality as does the biological need to procreate. Mm. And so I think we we have to get really careful and honest with ourselves about what people's motivation is and how it came to be. For me, I'm just a really big slut shamer. (laughs) And, uh, when I have sex, casual sex with a chick, I don't know why I sound a little weird. Um, I d- don't want them to also be having casual sex with a bunch of random people at the same time. Like, I don't want to go back to the same chick 
if she's like also going around having. I feel sex like the doctor's well, probably encountered. I'd rather. And also, like, if she has sex with you, you got to know her standards aren't that high. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, I I don't know. It's just like I don't want to. If I'm having casual sex with a person, I don't want to keep going back to the same person. It's not even that like I'm a sex fiend. It's just I'd rather have some kind of like. The only girl I know. I really don't understand why I'm like. Oh, that. I mean, to be honest, the only girl we know for sure he's had sex with called in oh, and God. gave us she was a, drug a grocery list of the substances she was on that week. It was, it was not just pills, but but uh, all kinds of. I mean, she didn't say meth, but she might have been on Probably. meth as well at the time. And doctor. Uh, can I talk about an issue I've been having recently in the bedroom? Absolutely, and I'll go next because this is, I, I feel like we're blessed to have Dr. Kate here with I love us. It. And yeah, very, she's soothing to be around. I'll, I'll say that much. I enjoy it. We needed yeah. a little bit of femininity in here. We, we did, and our fans <laughs> did too, I'm sure. Doctor, yeah. I've always prided myself on the ability to achieve an erection no matter what. Mm-hmm. Las Vegas. <laughs> 48 hours, no, 72 hours straight of drinking. Mm -hmm. I could find a random girl at a pool party. She doesn't even need to be that attractive. And I will be rock hard and able to come even if I'm doing cocaine simultaneously. Well, now that is something to to just marvel at for a moment. (laughs) Absolutely. If I was built a little bigger, there might even have been a career for me in the San Fernando Valley (laughs) doing porn. Recently, though, because I've had the first long-term girlfriend I've ever had, uh-huh. which means unprotected, constant sex. Yeah, He might look like a, a young man. Well, he is a young man, but he's 30. I'm sure he looks younger than, than 30, but yeah, that's his first real relationship at okay. 30. Yeah. And um, that on top of working from home. Mm-hmm. So this is the first time this last year that I've been fully employed from YouTube podcasting. I don't have a day job to go to. I jerk off probably two, three times a day. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, I go see my girlfriend and have unprotected sex two or three times a weekend. Mm -hmm. What's happening is I can still achieve an erection, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But sometimes climaxing is becoming a little bit difficult. And I'm worried. He watches a lot of pornography. That's going to be my next question. I've been trying to cut back because Leandro (laughs) tells me. I tell him. He's a gentleman. He only jerks off to pictures of girls on Instagram. Well, that's either that or sexting. I'm a fan of of the sexting, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a problem because, you know, sometimes I've, uh, you know, I do have a girlfriend and some young ladies are, they tend to slide into my DMs and Mm want to have a little fun in that regard. You know, and. And And you can be damn sure Leo never slides into theirs. (laughs) It's only one way. But it, it's been a problem, you know. I've been that's something I've been trying to handle it myself, and uh-huh. that's one of my faults, I'd say, and, and a problem. It's been a problem in my relationship for sure. sure. But uh, we can talk about that. I was going to talk about that with you, but let's get back to Danny yeah. and his porn addiction. The, well, no, no. The real issue right now is climaxing, and it's right. it's not really an issue. Okay. I but came. It's, still, it's taking longer than you would like. It's taking longer, and. <laughs> God himself would smite me if he knew some of the fantasies that were going on in my head to get myself to come. Sure. It's getting dirty up there. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, he's... And so it hasn't been an issue, but sometimes I'll need to jerk myself off to finish because I can squeeze more and I can get more friction going than on a woman's vagina. Well, yeah. Well, listen, you, this this little like bro MD situation that yeah. you guys have going on, it's pretty spot on. So, okay. you know, a couple of things to think about. First is what kind of porn are you watching? Oof. Don't you don't even transsexual need to... anal? <laughs> no, that is a lie. Whatever it is, tell I'm the truth. It's more intense than whatever's going on in the. Oh yeah, you, you, want, you want to tell her about the throw up porn? <laughs> you want to tell her about that? He, he masturbated this woman that was choking on a man's phallus so much that she was throwing up over and over again but she had large breasts he's very into the he's very into the large large breasts okay um i don't know what that says about him but but that was he did masturbate to that numerous many times <laughs> no no and he no. felt bad about it but he's it was consensual it. have you know it was for a major studio it was not some snuff film garage operation yeah it was a major stu- porn studio you also motivated probably a couple thousand like teenagers <laughs> to go watch the same watch video watch I might have mentioned video. the exact title but it was she was complicit she it was like her idea it wasn't one of those really gnarly ones that I've stumbled across where it's a guy who looks like a meth addicted biker skull fucking some <laughs> Japanese girl it oh wasn't my that God, Jesus but the girl was vomiting and I <laughs> yeah. I after I came, I, there was a degree of regret. I'm going to be honest, and I needed <laughs> and I needed to come to the confessional of the Leo and Danny show and tell yeah, the audience it, afterwards. It, we we always share everything with the audience, which I think help. I think it helps them in many ways. You know, well, you guys are not the first people to watch porn that's that extreme and feel yeah. bad about it later, mm-hmm. right? Or mm-hmm. not? So yeah, I mean, if that's what you're watching, 
Sex with your girlfriend? Yeah. Unless she's doing the same thing, which that's unlikely. <laughs> Gotta go buy her a big meal at Arby's before our next session. Yeah. Oh my God. So I think one of the things that a lot of men come to me to talk about is exactly this, right? They've noticed a shift in their sexual performance and um, functionality with real life partners compared to what it's like when they're by themselves being sexual. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple of things to think about after you rule out a medical condition, right? Which I'm guessing you've already ruled that out. Yes. It's not medical. Yeah. Nice. So think about stress. If you can have an erection and you can ejaculate by yourself, likely stress is not the primary culprit in the chip, the change in your um, ejaculation duration. So the other things to think about are what are you watching to get yourself off? And is there anything even close to that happening in real life? And for mm -hmm. most men, the answer is there's a huge discrepancy because yeah. mm -hmm. porn is a fantasy and it can be really fun sometimes. But when we watch it so much, the combination of the titillating images, pun intended, and the technology by which we take them in, it's a super stimulant for our brain. So our brain's like dopamine just do, 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 like blowing up all over the place. And that doesn't happen when you're in real life with a human in part because what you're doing is less exciting, but also because our brain takes in information much slower when we're person to person, as opposed to when we're watching a video on a computer screen. The way that gets into our brain is so fast that nothing can compete in mm. real life. That's why mm. so many people are walking around with their phones just up to their face, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling yeah. all day. That's right. right. Add sex to that and yeah. voila, your brain's done. God, so Him and I have both talked about it. Going into your direct messages, it's like the excitement of going to a nightclub. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, she's cute. Or like, oh, she met oh, this <laughs> girl. Like, she thinks I'm funny. Like, it, it feels yeah. great at a bar. Oh, I'm so glad you addiction. guys have a great experience. I just get mm. dick pics all day. It's like, really? no, no, that no. Is, no guys, no, come on, no. guys. <laughs> Dick pics. None of our fans better do that. You just insured it might. I will <laughs> hunt you down. But yeah, I'm sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we'll, we can talk about male entitlement another time. But yeah. so the other thing to think about is the way that you move your hand on your penis when you masturbate. So there's a ritualizing element of that that many people do when they masturbate. They know what works. They get in the groove. They do the same thing the same time every yeah. time in the same way, the same level of torque and movement and direction and speed at the mm. same paces. Mm -hmm. So your body gets habituated to that and it says, yep. So that, that's why I keep going back to that when vaginal sex isn't getting me off as quickly. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because no woman's vagina, no person's mouth, no person's anus is going to be able to grip a penis the way a hand does. Austin that's comes right. pretty close with his anus. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man of many talents. <laughs> Austin sure is. That's wow. That's so, mm -hmm, good. No, I was just saying no, so, that that makes complete sense. Yeah. And I, it's interesting. I haven't even thought about that. It was a total subconscious move. Mm -hmm. But now, because I, there's an element of shame to it. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's starting to look at her metaphorical watch. And I know that's making it harder for me because I start to feel pressure, which makes the orgasm even more distant. And so I revert back to old faithful. Yep. Hand on the cock, vomit video on my iPhone over <laughs> her back. God damn it. That part's not true. You just hit on the last piece of this, which is when we're with another person in real life, guess what? We have feedback from that person, good, yeah. bad, or otherwise. You don't get that when you're watching porn. Mm. And I don't have anything against porn in as a concept, right? Mm. But when we're watching porn, it's a very one-directional experience. They're not looking at you saying, hurry up, go faster, I've got something to do, or yeah. can you do a little to the left or do this? No, you just get to immerse yourself in that without the interference of another human being's feedback. And so that can create a lot of anxiety, a lot of shame, a lot of fear, a lot of pressure to do something a certain way. And so it can really, you know, hijack people's pleasure experience. So doctor, what I would like to ask now is not masturbating is not going to happen for me. Okay. I use it as a release. For me, I have so much work to do during, throughout the day. I work about a 13 hour day. Mm -hmm. I have to get my mind right by maybe working out is one way I get myself refocused and re-energized, mm -hmm. having a meal, and I'm sad to say, beating off. That's a way for me to reset, get a release, a little bit of a mental break. Mm -hmm. It's going to remain part of my schedule. But what can I jerk off to that is going to be a healthier choice as far as not um, desensitizing me or not having all that insane 
dopamine shit going on in my head? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you might think about creating some videos with your partner if she's open wow. to that or mm-hmm. taking some pictures with her together so that you get to start pairing the experience of pleasure and masturbation with her as mm. a visual mm. stimulus, right? Not that she's a stimulus, but you know Mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can do that. You can kind of write yourself a script um, to think about like what would be a super hot way to be intimate that Mm -hmm. doesn't involve what you've seen in porn Mm -hmm. so that you're now creating a new narrative. So now you've got the extra bump of it being new and novel. It's also in your voice and tone, which could really help accelerate the arousal. Um, And you get to sort of, you know, what is it? Create your own adventure, if mm-hmm. you will. You can have lots of different endings so that you can go to them as as needed. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing that I might encourage is check out either different kinds of porn. So Erica Lust makes amazing porn. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot more realistic. And it's a lot more um, body inclusive and diverse. And so I find that that gives people a lot more... Um, more to hold on to that isn't so ritualized as we see in mainstream porn in terms of you know what kind of pleasure is focused on and and in what way what's the name erica lust erica erica lust. erica lust, lust. Okay. Yep. is it one chick or is it her studio um i'm pretty sure she's got a team that work with her but mm-hmm. she's nice. she's the main person um but yeah i think it's just erica lust.com she has great porn and then another thing, another problem that's kind of getting to me from porn is all these dudes have such big fucking dicks. It just makes <laughs> me feel insecure about what I'm working with too. And sometimes, <sighs> and sometimes I feel like when I'm banging a chick, I'm like, oh god, it'd be so much better right now. She'd be loving this so much more if I had a thick eight incher. And sometimes I'll find myself fantasizing that my cock yeah. is bigger than it is to like replicate the images I saw in porn. He has a little bit of a fascination with uh, large phalluses. He's okay. always t- he wrote a book about them. Kind basically, he talks wrote a about book him about all the big time. Cock. He did, he did, and and it's not he's not by any means. I don't think he's into them sexually by any mm-hmm. means. But he, I feel like it's it's a, it's a connection to his manhood, and he, he, I feel like he has some issues with that that I don't think are warranted because you know I've seen his penis. It's not that small by any means, mm-hmm. and it's not. He's anything, felt it too. I haven't felt it. That's not true. <laughs> he's but tasted it. it I have not Taste tasted it. it. <laughs> I have not tasted it. Austin, on the other hand, he <laughs> has. Now, it's not something that he... I feel like if he could get over that, mm-hmm. it, it would help him a lot in life. I think that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. You know? we all, we, a lot of people have hang-ups on different parts of their body, and certainly men seem to focus a lot on the size of their penis as if it matters to women the way that they think it does. Right. But, you know, there's been so much focus on the size of a man's penis, and that's such a jockeying move between men most women are just really not all that interested. Mm-hmm. It's They're very more true. interested in how do we connect? Where do you touch me in other places? You know, the the penetration is just sort of like the little cherry on top of the cake. I don't mean little to be funny. Yeah, but, no. <laughs> but how dare you <laughs> leave now? She said little. Yeah. But, but yeah. really, I mean, it, penetration is just one part of it's sex, one part, yeah. and it when you can take the focus off of that, honestly. Sex gets so much better, and mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot more raves and, and compliments from the people that you're sexual uh, with. So uh, true. Uh, doctor, we were talking about Tony Robbins earlier. Mm-hmm. The book I'm reading right now is about finances by Tony <laughs> Robbins. It talks about the percentages your portfolio should be broken up into mm-hmm. stocks and bonds. If you could give me a similar pie chart, fingering, oral foreplay versus sex, what percentages are you looking for for a satisfying sexual experience? That's a great question. That's what I'm here for. I wish I could give you an answer, but every single body is so different different that, you know, I could tell you it's 30% oral, 30% nipple, Mm. 10% Ooh, nipple. Neck. I didn't even of thought course, about that It's in a an erogenous oh, zone, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, can you, you... Know, nipples can have whole orgasms on their own, right? Nipple orgasms. Yeah. Danny, we have much to learn. Don't I, I, like uh, Dr. Nipples. Kate's going to have to be on the show another time. Doctor, well. I don't want to make you uncomfortable and have you give us your own portfolio, so uh-huh. to speak. But can I just maybe just say it's your cousins or something like that and give us actual <laughs> hard numbers right here? Because I'm dying to know. You can be vague. Break, round it to the nearest 10. You know, what What I'll say is that it varies depending on the mood. Gotcha. Um, but very infrequently is more than 50% of my interest considered uh, focused on vaginal penetration. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So really, guys, diversify. Diversify You're the doing portfolio. doing yourself a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, I think that, yeah, I feel like men, God, we are good with instructions. Mm -hmm. And if women out there, you have this matter of fact approach that you have with us right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like me and Danny are ingesting it right now and we're going to go and we're going to do it on our girlfriends Mm -hmm. and it's going to help our sexual relationship Mm -hmm. because, you know, I I I feel like the communication between partners is never like this though. No, it's not. This is great. And you know what would blow their minds even more, I bet? Mm -hmm. If you went home and you said, okay. Here's a roadmap of your body. Show me some directions. Tell me what you like. What <laughs> parts should I circle? Mm. Right? Like, what rest stops am I waiting in and hanging out for a while? That is mm. the key. And if you invite them, and now they may not know, because this is the real kick in the pants, right? Women are so stigmatized for being sexual more often than not that mm-hmm. many of them have just completely disconnected from their own sort of pleasure sense. They haven't taken as much time to really get to know their bodies and figure out what they like. So they may not know what they want. And if they say, I don't know, they might be nervous to tell you or they might not know. So mm-hmm. slow down. Take some time to really explore with them because if you really like explore that landscape. That's that's the, the, uh, that, that, the, the <laughs> keys that to the kingdom. Out. Yeah, the keys of the kingdom right there. <laughs> and so, Doctor, I read a book. You probably are even familiar with it. It's called She Comes First oh, yeah. by some guy who's some sort of doctor, dude. Ian Kerner. She knows his name. Of course. (laughs) I read that book, and the general approach it prescribes for oral sex is great. Yeah. I brought many a woman. I do mean many to climax with (laughs) Ian's moves. The problem is, though, I feel like once you use that a couple times on your girl, she starts to understand what you're doing. Okay, here it is again, the slow build around my legs and stomach Mm -hmm. to my lower vagina. And then after much teasing, we come up to the clitoris. And then we come back to the clitoris and then we focus on the clitoris after about 15 minutes of teasing. I feel like a woman is going to get bored because she's the tease is no longer a tease Mm -hmm. the 16th time you've teased her. How can I change up my approach? Well, why are you starting with the same starting point every time you have sex? He's very me- mechanical about his life. He's He has a routine with everything he does. So yeah. I could see that, that he would do it in the bedroom as well. Sort of true. Well, oh, no. it just, that's so, that's what he essentially prescribes is a, a buildup to oral sex mm-hmm. that works in more or less the same way. He doesn't give you a bunch of different permutations like, oh, this time you're going to just lick her asshole after a baseball <laughs> game right when you open the door. And then you're going to go back to the pussy move. Uh, it's... If you're going to do that, yeah. make sure you're being clean. You know, yeah. Bring a washcloth because UTIs can happen when you go back to front. I'm tired of you yeah. hygiene shaming Back to front, me. Danny. UTIs, all right? Yeah. Back to front. You remember that? Oh, I told my girlfriend to wipe her ass, asshole to pussy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's is, is that why incorrect? the UTIs happen. That is happen. incorrect. Oh, yeah. That is incorrect. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, what... I have a question. Wait, about... I'm still curious about my approach with the vagina. I'm sorry. Right, go ahead. No, continue. Wait, Absolutely. Oral sex. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Any kind of like ritualized routine is going to get boring after a while because Mm -hmm. as human beings, we like shiny new objects and we like shiny new dance moves. So it's fine if you want to use a similar kind of oral sex routine, but don't just start with that, you know, play around. Focus on different parts of your partner's body, you know, take one sex experience and focus on their back. Kiss that, rub that, touch that with different kind of tactile um stimulants Mm -hmm. and really focus on getting different parts of the body aroused and then when she's super hot and heavy Mm -hmm. and ready to go then go do the ian kerner Mm -hmm. move on her vagina what about just climaxing on her back and then taking a nap jesus i mean if that works (laughs) for her if that works for her (laughs) to each their own but no i like that though i'm joking but that's that's smart i like that yeah you can you can move the different recipes around and still get great sauce I would like to say in of the vast majority of my sexual encounters, the women have been like, <laughs> I've had sex with quite, I have sex with people and I don't tell y'all, just so you know. Oh, people, really? Yes. Well, uh, thank you. It's fine. No, we me understand. Me and Brooks hooked up a couple times. No, I'm just Oh, saying. God. But, but go uh, ahead. Uh, the, most of the chicks that I come across with are like, skip all that shit, just go straight to fucking me, and then slap the shit out of me and choke me until I pass out. Jesus. You can't clean up your language a little bit for the good doctor. That's how the girls are. They're like, bro, just stop all this bullshit. I want you to choke me and slap me and then leave. I I don't know if you... Most chicks... Have you encountered with the age group, the young, the 19 to... The 18 to 21 crowd currently with the porn generate, the phones, they're kind of nuts, right? Sexually, or they have their own issues going to pathologize them but Uh what i will say is that definitely people who grew up with porn as their primary um 
source of sexual education, mm-hmm. they have a different relationship to sex than people who didn't. Austin's right? relationship, yeah. like that. Girls yeah. my age like violence. It seems sex. like. They all like fucking being, the, get the shit kicked I, out. I will say that almost every girl I've been with, even if they come from a perfectly normal, perfectly healthy household, mm-hmm. they all seem to enjoy getting slapped, getting spanked lightly, getting spit on, and getting verbally abused. On a kid, like every single time they have sex? Is ba- I've, I've encountered it, basically. Not every single time, but every single yeah. girl that yeah, I've they, with for a long period of time. At some point will enjoy that, but isn't that normal? I mean, So there, there's nothing wrong with liking a little bit of aggression, liking a little bit of humility humiliation, liking a little bit of that play. I think there's a couple things to keep in mind here. When sex is more casual or more transactional, we tend to live out different kinds of fantasies than we do when we're with our primary partner, right? Mm -hmm. Generally, and it's not to say that you can't be kinky as fuck with your primary partner. First Mm -hmm. time she's dropped an (laughs) (laughs) F-bomb. I'm guessing it's okay. It's encouraged. encouraged. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You could be totally kinky and and fun and adventurous with your primary partner, but also there tends to be more intimate sex too. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't really go on one night stands to have like really lovey-dovey, gooey, kiss me all night, look into my eye sex. Uh But a lot of people love that and they can do that too. But so what we're saying, Austin, is that none of these girls are considering you as a serious boyfriend. <laughs> well, that is part of my problem, though, is that a lot of these girls that I start hooking up with, they fall for me like hard. <laughs> and then I'm stuck in this awkward position where it's like, OK, I'm not supposed to go fuck other chicks, apparently, but I'm also not dating you. And I also don't want you getting dick down two seconds before I put my dick in there. So then I usually just stop talking to him. Dick down. Sounds like you're a young man and you have time to figure out these things. I don't want to be someone's fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card that they're fucking calling up. Okay, I'm going to summon Blue Eyes White Austin to come over and fuck me today when they got like 50 yeah, other right, cards Austin. in the back. I'm going to go check the doctor's stool for moisture after you're making these Yu-Gi-Oh references. <laughs> God, yeah. I'm sure she really appreciates it. Hey, I thought it. that was pretty good. Uh, so, I, I want I interrupted her to make yeah, fun of yeah, Austin. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, it's no. so easy. It, <laughs> so, the, so they're living out. So the the hookup can be a, a way to live out a fantasy. In that, it can be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people don't necessarily think about like, ooh, I want to be intimate with my hookup partner. They think I want to have some sex. Mm. So let me go do that. Mm. Right. So there's different ways that we're sexual with different people, depending on how we think about them in our lives. Yeah. Um, you want right. to get into uh, Leo's? Uh, oh God. Things? I, uh, yeah. I mean, first, I want to first ask what what is how do you categorize somebody a sex addict? What is that? What does that actually mean? <laughs> That's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, so somebody who struggles with compulsive sexual behaviors or sex addict, as it's called in colloquial terms, um, really, it, it's just like any other addiction, right? They're preoccupied with it. Mm-hmm. They've tried to stop and they can't. It's Ooh. causing negative consequences Ooh. in their life and mm-hmm. they still can't stop. Um, they develop a tolerance, meaning they need more and more, Ooh, either intense or more geez. frequent, Ooh, to get mm-hmm. the same kind of high or um, orgasm. And when they do stop, they experience withdrawals. So they get ah. irritable, grumpy, can't sleep, can't wow. eat, get it's, pissy. It's, it's this borderline. Sound, it's borderline. It's not borderline. This it, is you, it sounds, Leo. It this like is me. you. It sounds like me. The, the way, okay, so the way I was on a a reality TV show. There's been negative things that, that have come to my life because of a sex addiction, I think as okay. well. But I, I was, I was on a reality TV show and there was a lot of women that were, that were thrown at me a little bit and I had a lot of fun. I would, but before that I was, I always put myself in situations where I was going to be around a lot of women, where mm-hmm. I had an opportunity to, to have a lot of fun with a lot of women. Yeah. And, um, I was, I would, sometimes I would go for girls. I would, I would have, I, I would have like a girl that I would be, hooking up with that I would have sex with. And then oftentimes I would have numerous partners that I would just do like, I would, I would have them kind of service. Do you want me to put it in uh, blunt terms? Go or? ahead, man. Leo's got a problem with receiving oral sex from women in parking lots, mm-hmm. not in parking lots, but, but just like very, <laughs> it's uh, a good way to put it. It's in opportunistic spaces. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, public, it can be at home, but it's, it's quick. It's like, yeah. It's very like, uh, you know, I'm here to do, just do this. I, I find girls that just want to do that yep. for me or whatnot. And uh, sexting has been a problem in relationships mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I've had, uh, you know, issues being faithful because I, I, I cheat when I, I sext or sometimes get with a random blowjob. Like, uh, you know, there are girls that have been in my life for many years that just do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it has been uh, very difficult. Blowjob fairies, we call them. God, that is not what we call them. But <laughs> but, the, but it's it, it, it has been a problem in my relationships. It's been a, I, I did it at work, and I was 
I was let go because mm -hmm. you know that that got hairy. So it's been it's been a problem. There have been consequences. My, there's been consequences. So I I don't I don't masturbate to porn very often. It's, I don't have like any porn addiction. I do like sexting a lot. Mm -hmm. I do like when a girl sends me nude pictures mm -hmm. and uh, you know even calls me daddy or whatnot. Sure. Yeah, and um, I. I think that it's it's something I loved that Danny has been trying to help me with this for a long time, and and he referenced and I've got the credentials. <laughs> well, he's he's also very much uh, he understands me because he's very much in many ways an addict is like me, but not to the he's he's helped it it is he's shaped his life where it is it, it helps him more than it hinders him now. But I there's a chapter in um, Think and Grow Rich where he talks about Napoleon Hill talks about using it. To, in your life that addiction not the addiction but the drive to have sex to further your life forward and uh, put it off to to gain you know to have mm -hmm. some success and whatnot but it, it has definitely been something that I mean I've, I've gotten better with it I'm 34 now mm -hmm. it's definitely in my mid-20s I was uh, you know sexting so often and all I would do is work out and then try to like get girls to come over to my house basically mm -hmm. for, very, for many years and I, I thought of it like this like I don't have a drinking problem I don't have I don't smoke marijuana incessantly. All I, you know, I, 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 my drug, my, the thing that I want or the thing that my vice per se is sex mm -hmm. or, or blowjobs and, you know, and combining it with blowjobs in front of Best Buy. That is not in front of Best Buy. That's specifically. Your spot. That's your spot. It was, no, it was any, <laughs> anywhere that it would happen. I do like the car. Yeah, sure. The car's mm -hmm. fun. It's like mysterious and, mm -hmm. you know, naughty and whatnot, but. Yeah. But well, that's been my relationship. The element of risk really can the add risk, a lot yeah. of extra dopamine. It's oh, like yeah. adding an accelerant on an already hot fire. That's mm. absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. That was a very honest of you, Leo. Leo gave you a very honest rundown. It felt yeah. like we or you two were in a couch. On you were on a couch. <laughs> she was on the chair I, with a clipboard. I've therapy forever. Yeah. But I've never done it because you know my I've I come from an Italian South American family where mm -hmm. therapy is frowned upon. Yeah. You know and. Not just frowned upon, but almost not believed in, you yeah. know. And everybody in my family needs therapy, especially yeah. me. Yeah. But yeah, she's I'm gonna from an Italian family, so I understand. Yeah, you understand, yeah. yeah. And uh, for that outburst, you're gonna find a Venmo request for three fifty from her after the show. <laughs> that is your that's your rate, right? Very. Uh, that's that's awesome. It depends yeah. on depends, depends on my right. what, what the circumstances are. Mm -hmm. But this is not a therapy session. Of course, this yeah. is a conversation. So, Leo, if I can and... try to distill this all down, it oh, seems God. like well, it seems like you're flirting with the consequences part of the sexual addiction definition. Sure. Staying faithful to girlfriends mm -hmm. and not being able to is a consequence Absolutely. of your drive to have sex. Mm -hmm. Getting fired from jobs is a consequence. Not being Absolutely. as productive during the day or during the week is a mm -hmm. consequence. Yep. So what do you have to say about that, doctor? What's the next step for Leandro? Well, I mean, for anyone who recognizes that there have been negative consequences because of their sexual behavior in their life and they've tried to stop and they can't, I mean, this is the point of intervention where I would say maybe working with a therapist could help you, a certified Absolutely. sex addiction therapist specifically. Mm -hmm. Which is, you are a certified sex I addiction am. specialist. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but also, if, if therapy is something that you can't afford, there are some providers who have really great online courses that you can take. That's and great. Also, there are really great fellowships out there, like Sex Addicts Anonymous, that mm -hmm. you can go to, and that's free. And, you know, the, there's a lot of recovery in the rooms. And when people really start redefining their relationship to sex, they have such a wellspring of, first of all, deeper intimacy with themselves. And then really great intimacy with partners and hotter sex than they ever imagined before. Right. Now, it shows up a little bit different than most of their addicted or ritualized sex did. Mm -hmm. But most people that I work with who are in their recovery are really grateful to have a different relationship to sex once they have some traction. Oh, I, I would be happy to. It, it Like you said, it's caused, uh, for sure, it's caused depression in mm -hmm. my life and uh, and all of, all of the above. I mean, yeah, the 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 thrill, the hedonist mm -hmm. kind of lifestyle is fun for that moment, of course. but then it goes away immediately and then you just need more. And yeah, yeah that's been a problem that I, I need to definitely, I've cried on this podcast before. Um, that was pro it's always in the back of my mind, but, but yeah, it's, it's something that I, I do need to address at some point in my life and I'm getting, um, you know, I'm getting up there. So, uh, my girlfriend's great. She, she tries to, you know, she, she deals with a lot of shit mm -hmm. and she has dealt with a lot of shit, but, um, 
yeah, I, I thank you. It's great to, to hear from you. And the, the free, I mean, I can, I could probably afford one session a year at 350 and then, uh, you know, maybe a couple, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, it, it would be, it would be great to, to definitely talk to somebody about it. And yeah. the problem with the, uh, the free sexaholics anonymous oh, thing God. is we're going to go try to shoot a video there. Now that you've given us this, idea. that is a great, <laughs> that was idea, the first yeah. thing that I thought is we're going to go. <laughs> the, yeah, they would not let us shoot, but that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. We hidden do it, camera. Yeah, yeah. We do it surreptitiously. Don't yeah, worry. We yeah. find ways. Uh, oh, doctor, uh, do you do you have a podcast of your own? You're fantastic. You should definitely uh, be talking all the time. Oh, and you're so kind. Thank absolutely. you. I used to. I used to have a show um, called Behind Closed Doors with my former business partner, but mm -hmm. recently um, I sort of reorganized my practice, and I'm getting ready to start a new one. Nice. Um, so I don't know what it's going to be called yet, but I'm really excited about it. It's going to really be focused on understanding that intersection of mental health and sexuality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. really helping people embrace an empowered and intentional conversation around it. That's great. You, I would I you guys would... want to brainstorm some names for the podcast right now? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Dicks, titties, and anal lubricant. <laughs> What is wrong with you? I mean, that might be hard to advertise with Google Ads. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Google Ads might not like that one. I'll let you run a couple on the house on my YouTube channel. Oh, well, so thank you. She, uh, yeah, I think I feel like you would definitely if if you'd have us because you're such an odd pairing with us. It would be great to have you uh, come often on the podcast. You know, like every now and then, uh, we yeah. we need the doctor's opinion. You know uh, what? Well, we'll talk about our antics on the weekend. Maybe one of us has going through a breakup. You know, uh, we're, we're going to need the doctor. I, I think Brooks. I'm having a great time. Yeah, yeah, I'm oh, having a great time. I think we, Brooks needs a doctor. We, we, we do. We Brooks we in. we have guys that really need your help too, and uh, and even women. I mean, he's dating an escort right now, and uh, he's a pansexual lunatic. He's a pansexual. He he likes every, each and every. I mean, I, everybody. I wouldn't uh, put a Labrador past him. Yeah, seriously. Could well, even... come on now. Let's let's not pathologize <laughs> pansexuals. Yeah, Danny. That I, oh, he's a bestiality or that, yeah. that is bestiality. You're right. That is bestiality. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse um, terms. But yeah, we're having a great time, and I think our audience is really gonna really gonna appreciate you and needs you. I think mm. too, because yeah, the young man group is lost. You know, in many ways. They they are, and you know, I think men right now are struggling in such a unique way um, because. They're finding themselves in the hot seat for things that they didn't do or didn't know that they were doing that were, that are now being called inappropriate or hurtful there or scary. Yeah. And a lot of men are really scared and they don't know how to show up in relationships because mm. unfortunately the scripts that they've been given from intergenerational yeah. um, foreclosures on what it means to be a man yeah. just isn't flying anymore. And frankly, it didn't fly back then either, but women just weren't as loud about it. So, right. yeah. you know, now I think we have such an awesome opportunity to, you know, talk about what does it mean for redemption for men and women and anybody who's non-binary, like for anything that you've done in the past that you don't love. Okay. How do you move forward? Oh how God, that's what I need forward? for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. God, you nailed it. You want to, uh, Leo and I, he's got a, a very rich history with this. He was yeah. actually officially me too. Yes. Yeah. It, in, I, sent a dick pic in college and and, uh, and when I was on the bachelorette they have mm -hmm. a fan base that's very adamant about things like that so yeah. that was national news that I sent a dick pic in college and then that led to me getting well resigning from my job because mm -hmm. the girl that I got you know had gotten a blow job from decided to you know uh, that she, all of a sudden she didn't like me anymore and, uh, and things got hairy and, and I, I had to leave um, yeah, so that, that, and the fact that I left a comment about seven years ago on a, I'm, I'm laughing because it's embarrassing. What did it say, I, I, It said, you need my big dick. Uh, so these two things, uh, I, I said, you need my Dr. big dick. Doctor, first of all, would you respond to a guy who left that comment under it your was, most recent Instagram it was, picture? It was in defense, if I remember correctly, it was seven years ago. It was in defense, my, I believe she had been really rude to my friend. And I was like, you need my big dick. Cause I was 23, 24 at the time. And I was a douchebag, and I. You I wonder know, how she's ways, getting along in life without it. I mean, who knows? I, I'm sure I wouldn't even be interested at this point. But she's anyway. probably dead. <laughs> she died of she lack of landrose penis. Needed. But uh, but so that that and and then some girl on Twitter was like, "Oh, he sent my friend dick pics in college." So I was in a in a way uh, canceled, and uh, you know I was, but it's okay because it led me to Danny Mullen. Now we have a, a flourishing podcast and. And a, a very flourishing YouTube channel, and it's in in and in, in even in stand up, they don't regard those kind of things mm -hmm. as such a negative thing. So, mm -hmm. I I had to do stand up now, and in many ways, it was something that 
even aided me in, in life. Mm-hmm. I lost a very a job that I really liked. It was mm-hmm. a stunt show at Universal, and I was it, it helped me stay in shape, and I met a lot of women, and it was fun. But anyways, it also t- it, it it aided that sexual addiction and, and made it and and it was probably meant to be, you know, that I, I got let go. But but what you said really resonated with me because yeah, I, in my past transgressions is not who I am now, mm-hmm. and I'm only trying to I'm only trying my best to to be the best guy that I can be now, mm-hmm. and it's hard. And I, sometimes I, I don't I don't I'm not the the greatest every day, and I need to and it's something that b- makes me upset and depressed. And it's a cycle and keeps going. So it almost feels like I can't help it. But there, I need to search. I need to find help. Yeah. I'm going to hook you up with some resources afterward. Please. But, yeah. um, but what you said is so absolutely important because I think a lot of people get stuck in this idea of I fucked up mm-hmm. in the past. And so now I'm somehow not redeemable. I'm a throwaway. And so when we have that narrative then guess what? We just try to prove it right because if yeah. I can't be good, then I'm going to be the best fucking piece of shit I can be. Not consciously, but unconsciously mm. we say, well, I guess that's just who I am now. Yeah. And it really gets in the way of people being able to change directions in their lives. Mm. So I'm happy to hear that you have. Absolutely. I'm trying my best. Yeah, I think I think my girlfriend is aiding me a lot. Yeah. Honestly, Danny and, and the people I surround myself with now is people that I can be honest with. This podcast... I, it kind of, it, it checks me in and, and gives me a reality, mm-hmm. you know, check. Like when I'm doing things that are yeah. Danny, especially I have to say, dude, you, you really stopped me from doing a lot of things that I think I would do if you weren't around. So Aww. I appreciate that. Well, there's only our, no, I, got, I was going to make a joke about he always wants to make a joke. <laughs> I, I, yeah. We'll continue on. This is a yeah. sincere moment. How did you guys meet? We met 2018. Mm-hmm. Oh on a social media project mm-hmm. for a Facebook page, a comedy page. I was an actor and he was kind of helping out the production that day. And then oh. I just thought he was the wittiest dude. And he, I remember it was before I was on, uh, I went to do the bachelorette and I remember telling him like, we should do some videos. We should make some content when I'm, when I'm back or, and, uh, and we decided to do it. And then we made one video when we came back, when I came mm-hmm. back, we made a video and it's a huge hit on his channel. And then we, we kind of basically partnered up and, and we haven't really turned. Uh, it's been great for That's about awesome. a year, almost two years now, mm-hmm. or over two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah over two years. Over two years, and we've grown a lot together, oh. and and it's it's been great. And he's like a brother mm-hmm. that I never had. I never had a brother, mm-hmm. but he, and he, it's I'm kind of like his brother in that I bang his sister. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would that would be he has still. to make he has to make one sister joke every podcast. His sister followed me on Instagram for a while. I didn't yeah. even know he just told me that she did, and yeah. then I was like, "Oh, that's fair game for jokes." Yeah, constantly. So it's, it's just he's <laughs> an asshole about it. And he always catches me when I'm off guard, yeah. and right when he gets bastard. vulnerable, yeah, I hit him below the belt. Sister joke again. <laughs> At the, least your sister didn't try to fuck him. Yeah, yeah his, his sister, sister DM'd him, which is funny. <laughs> Her eyes His sister follows huge. me as well, yeah. <laughs> she DM'd me and said, uh, if you want a party, hit me up. Swinky oh, yeah. face. Do yeah. you, think, you think that indicates interest, doctor? I mean, who's to say? <laughs> Just say it. His she sister's a whore. She could be fucking with you. Absolutely. I don't think so. That's she a that's very totally private forum be. on which to she fuck totally with you. She totally could be fucking with you. <laughs> no, but doctor, one of the things she said earlier that really resonated with me is she said we have these scripts as men about how to behave. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, I'm not some PC pussy. I think anybody listening to this podcast will understand that. I know there's a time for men to be men. But going into college, my top three influences were... The show Californication with David Duchovny, (laughs) a bunch of ex-wrestler dudes I lived with in community college. I transferred to UCLA and they uh, had a long history of gang bangs, Mm -hmm. answering Craigslist ads to fuck people's wives. And uh, what was the last one? The Motley Crue biography by Neil Strauss. Those were my Bibles going into college that influenced my treatment of yeah. women. And, and I had a father who would pause classic Hollywood movies and tell me what Clark Gable and Marlon Brando was doing right mm. with the girls as in regards to being, you know, an alpha male. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big fan of Don Draper on, on Mad Men. I don't know if you've ever watched that oh, show. Yeah. yeah. So it's always th- these things have influenced our behavior from the start. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Yeah. Not just your behavior, but how you see yourselves as you men. You see yourself as right? men, absolutely. And that's such an integral part, I think, of, of this conversation about sex. We cannot preclude 
our identity to ourselves first and foremost and the relationship that sex gives us to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will say things like, oh, I don't feel very sexual today and they'll feel not like themselves. And then uh, conversely, when they're feeling really on their game, they like the way they fit in their clothes or they just got a big deal at work or something like that, then they feel really vital and sexual. And so we've really got to look at how did we learn how to be who we are and how does that shape the way we think about sex and the way we think about pursuing sex, what it means to us, and then what the experience of sex does to reinforce or rebut something in our identity? Wow. Do you yeah. work with people that can't have sex, that like like virgins? Because I heard somewhere that like 20% <laughs> or like 40% of guys over the age of like 21 are like basically virgins for the next like two decades. Well, because once they go out of high school and they see, oh, there's all these opportunities for me to have sex and I wasn't able to land a single one of them, they basically give up and feel like pathetic. Mm-hmm. I the, buy that. The, the I totally buy the that. The incel, which, is that the... Well, hey, that, that's not necessarily the definition of an incel. Right. But, but yeah, I work with a lot of young people who are not sexual men and women and non-binary folks. Um, but really, I think a lot of men do kind of attach this idea of if I haven't been sexual with so many people at a certain point in my life that I'm not really a man and they do struggle with kind of getting over that hump. Mm. I'm really bad with the puns today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So, you know, I think it, the thing is like there's no finite, you know, time to be sexual in our lives. We have the gift of medicine if mm. our bodies start to falter in with age, but you know, we can be sexual in lots of different ways. And so yeah, I, I think your word, your choice of the word can't is curious. Mm. I would say they choose not to put themselves out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess insult does kind of like involuntarily celibate kind of makes sense. If you're if you want to have sex and you're just horribly awkward and I mean, obviously the, their main problem is they don't talk to chicks because they're in they're, they're shy. And uh, I mean, that's their main thing is they don't fucking talk to them. So then they're never going to get laid. <laughs> Austin spends a lot of time on the message board. So. Yeah, I spend a lot of time online. with guys who are nerds because I watch anime and they talk about it. They're yeah. like, bro, I literally can't get pussy. I can't all. find a girl with Cinema eight bro. tentacles. It's bullshit. That is bullshit. Um, yeah, Octopus I, exists, though, and you can buy them at the grocery store for like 20 bucks. Do people actually who are into hentai fuck octopi? Uh, I don't know, but I know there's porn of people sticking octopus and stuff in their vagina. Yeah, that's what I was Jesus, yeah. I Yeah, I saw a porn. This is way off topic. I saw a porn where a girl stuck a live, fresh-from-the-market octopus in oh, her vagina. Oh, God, that was <laughs> not healthy. Wait, that head, image. head first or tentacle first? Yeah, I, I think it had to go in head first because there are a lot of tentacles. that You you need some sort of zip tie to get them all together yeah. and make them one big penis. It's is that something you'd recommend me and my girlfriend trying out? No, it's <laughs> animal abuse. <laughs> it's animal abuse. That's true. That's right. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I have a Patreon where I give, uh, men advice on how to get girls. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think I have a decent approach. It's, it's not what my father taught me. I'll say that much. It's kind of a modernized approach and it, it's way less less aggressive. Sure. Step step one, buy him a drink. Step two, drop in a roofie. Oh Oh, my God. For 15 bucks a month. That's what he'll teach (laughs) you. Absolutely not. That is Um, not the approach. So SOS, if I don't make it home tonight. No, that drink, water. yeah, I've got it. Was, yeah. It was it one was of Leo's students. Um, no, it, it was, um, no, it's just, you know, I feel like having two sisters growing up definitely made me a little bit more, attu- like I understood women a little bit better and I was a little bit more, I guess, attuned to, to not be intimidated by the fact that every now and then, like I would just put it on, if they were, if my advances were denied, I never took it personally. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the main problem with a lot of young men is that Mm -hmm. they take everything that when they hit on a woman and I don't like to use hit. I I more like to be, go be approach, be charming. Mm -hmm. Don't hit on anyone. Uh, I feel like they, when, when a woman denies them, they are take it so personally. Yeah. And it's it could just be that they're having a bad day. It could be that they yeah. just... Or it could know. be the, the woman's having a bad day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. So, it, it, I, you know, in many ways, I feel like... Uh, uh, I, I don't know where I was going with that. But I, I, I'm glad you that you're... You were plugging your Patreon I wasn't shamelessly. plugging my Patreon shamelessly. <laughs> what I was going to say is I was going to... I wanted to talk to her about what the things I say and make sure that I'm saying the thing that I'm not furthering mm-hmm. the problems with these young men. And okay. I, I, I mean, 
Let's hear your approach. Well, so that so so the approach is, you know, there are, there is strength in numbers, but there is an approach to I, I say just start a conversation mm-hmm. that doesn't seem at all and be very easygoing mm-hmm. and not it, you can throw in a compliment to to maybe make them feel like you are attracted to them to give them that hint so it's not like an immediate okay this guy just you know isn't interested in me at all so mm-hmm. that you know so there is a, a little aspect of. Uh, you know, he might be into me. And because I, I'm talking to mainly younger men, I do say that to try to get the social media at the end, because it's less invasive than trying to get a number right off the bat. And then you can get and you to can the also number. tailor your social media to make yourself very attractive right. in yeah. the way that seven digits of a phone number wouldn't give. Exactly. <laughs> That's another thing I say that, you know, all social media nowadays is in many ways a dating dating apps. Mm-hmm. So you tailor your Instagram with maybe a picture of your family, some Maybe it's a picture of you with some animals to a make couple, sure that uh, you're sensitive. A, cu- a couple of you need my big dick comments. To get my... <laughs> those don't need to be there. But uh, I would uh, steer clear of those. Stay steer clear of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but you know, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe a picture with you and your family dog to make sure that she, you know, a, a woman feels comfortable knowing that you're not some guy that's gonna hurt her in any way. Yeah, so. but but only post those things if that is your actual life. I mean, right. if you're secretly Ted Bundy. <laughs> right. Don't, don't do that because do that, that's right. manipulation. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think women, all people for the most part, but women certainly appreciate authenticity, right? So, mm-hmm. to any young people, old people, whoever. Just like go talk to people. We're all just human beings. That's right. I, I drink up a conversation. I've said that many times. Human beings, absolutely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. do it from a place of detachment, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know if somebody's puppy just died last week. You don't know if one of their parents is sick. You don't know if they've lost their job mm-hmm. or if they have a medical condition. We don't know people's story. So I yes. really appreciate what you said about people taking things too seriously because yeah. rejection hurts. It sucks. It really does. Yeah. It really sucks. But it's not always the end of the conversation. But if you react poorly to rejection in that moment, that might be the end of the conversation. Right. 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 It could just be a question of not in this moment. So I think that's important to think about. And even if it doesn't work out with that one person, dating is a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. And you're always, it, you need to practice yes. talking to the opposite sex. It's, it's something that the reps... Uh, it's important to, to attempt it a lot because yeah. you're not going to get better if you don't attempt it. Um, Danny has some interesting approaches I've seen in Vegas before. Absolutely. I, I always try to remember what you did to the, to the, the girls from Ireland or it was, <laughs> which ended in you saying that you wait, wanted, wait, wait. that's, that was a good way to handle rejection. Wasn't it was, it, it was great. Tell her, tell her what you did. Cause it was great. This, it, the embarrassing thing is it wasn't even on video. Cause usually we pull right. antics like this on video, on video. Yeah. Uh, doctor, I was very drunk and it was in Lake Tahoe, Leo. <laughs> Lake Tahoe, that's right. right. Yeah. And I went up and I struck up a conversation with these nice Irish women who were drinking with, there was five women minding yeah. their own business. Uh, they basically said, get the hell away from me. I want nothing to do with you. And I might have said I wanted to attach charges to every corner of the island of Ireland and detonate those charges so they would get swallowed by the sea. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to blow up the entire island of Ireland uh, because they rejected him, which was I thought was very funny. The time. I mean, he said it in a funny. It was a funny demeanor. They were very aggressively being yeah. mean to him right off the bat. And I think it's a great example of uh, being the bigger man and handling <laughs> rejection well. We all learn from our you, mistakes. You, you, wherever the person comes from, you threaten to destroy their home country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a lesson we can end with, I think. Absolutely. So yeah. that boot, Italy, mm-hmm. I will sever that thing and let it drift out into the Mediterranean, doctor. It'll find you and kick your ass. With the that's boot? Right. Mm-hmm. No, that's right. Fuck, that's a big boot, too. It'll hurt. I'm, I'm curious if, if you're dating anybody. Um, mm-hmm. You are, okay. Yeah. Married or? Not married. Divorced. Oh. Um, yeah, but dating someone for about a year and a half now. Nice. I bet this guy's really got his shit together. He's got a lot of dough. He's like probably got a... Is he, is he wealthy? You know what? I'm not going to talk about his financial oh, okay. stuff. Uh, we can assume so. Do you really think she would be is with he, a guy flipping burgers down at he, Wendy's? Uh, he, he, you're very tall. Is he taller than you? He is taller than yeah. me. Okay. okay. This guy's a high-powered agent. No. He's doing something in the entertainment industry that's not on it's, the creative it's side. It's Chris Hemsworth. And <laughs> no, no, that's on the creative side. Um, oh yeah, I, yeah, I, guess, I guess he's pr- he might be a doctor. I could see I could see dating a doctor. Could we say what his profession is? He is in medicine. Oh, I nailed it. Is he? A, it, it, <laughs> are you Doctor Drew's side piece? 
<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I love Dr. Drew. I just wanted to shoot What do you think about it. Dr. Drew? I don't know him personally, okay. so I, I can't say You that. seem ambivalent toward his, uh, what he tells people to do, yeah. though, if you answer like that. You know, if I'm being really honest, I haven't listened to a Dr. Drew show since he was on Loveline. So we I don't were fans of Loveline. I'm yeah. a huge, now. a like, huge I mean, I fan of Loveline. I know he's on the air, but yeah. I don't know what his. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Did what his you person. like Loveline? I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was we great. were fans. Yeah. Yeah. Did that inspire you to get into the line of work you're in? No. <laughs> really? Not even a little bit? Because you must have been young when that I was going was on. Young. Yeah. That, like, that had that a no. Maybe unconsciously. Yeah. But never was it like, wow. You know, I'm really just so inspired by Loveline. It was a great show, but it was not part of why I chose the path. Gotcha. Adam yeah. Carolla on that show is part of why I chose comedy. He's fantastic. He is. He's a genius. I, yeah. He's great. So is Dr. Drew. Yeah. Dr. Both Drew is a really underrated radio personality, He's and he great. worked great with Adam Carolla. They were great together. I wonder why that show ended. I don't even know. They I do. Fantastic. I actually do know. Okay. After 10 years together, I think 1995 to 2005, mm -hmm. they were redoing their contracts. For the last three or so years, they'd each made a million apiece. A million for Drew, a million for Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, the station decided that Adam was the less important part of the equation, and they dropped his mm -hmm. salary down to like $300,000 a year, while Drew stayed at a million. Wow. And yes. then the, Adam assumed they were going to hold out, because Jimmy Kimmel and him had done similar things when they worked with The Man Show, when they were on the radio together. But Drew, sort of in secret, signed the contract. Uh, and basically threw Adam under the bus to use a cliche. And whereas if they would have worked together, they probably could have got that adjusted and Adam would have been making a million too. Mm -hmm. So uh, Adam left, but then they were able to reconcile because I guess that was really the only disagreement they'd had in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they'd been pretty much best friends up until that. And now they still do a podcast together pretty regularly. I think once a week, oh, wow. the Adam and Drew show. Oh shit. I, I didn't even know that. That's cool. Yeah. When I had my radio show, I used to record right next to Dr. Drew. And so oh. we would always like smile. And he seems super awesome. Really nice. Oh. I just have never worked with him. He's a handsome guy too. Is he? <laughs> I don't think that's her type. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, handsome, muscular. Well, he's now missing a prostate. He had to get that removed because he had cancer. But other than that, he's a fucking, he's a vital man. He's a good looking guy. Sure. There we are. She admits it. If you weren't with your current guy, would you get with Dr. Drew if he was willing to cheat on his wife? No, because I would never date someone willing to cheat on their wife. There we go. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> wow, you are you're uh, have people are you difficult to read? I feel like you're like because of the way you present yourself. I mean, I know you're on a, a podcast right now, but mm -hmm. I feel like a, a lot of men would be intimidated by you by the fact that you seem so I uh, I don't know very I'm, I'm centered. You know. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have gotten that feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe there's something intimidating about any woman who's professionally successful and smart yeah. because we guys feel that you're going to be hypercritical of all the shortcomings in our mm. lives. So that's why I would be intimidated by you. And that's why I think Leo and I are both dating significantly younger girls. Dating the younger girls, yeah. As, I, it's not something I've always done, but I am at the, in the, at since I hit thirty, I've been dating younger girls for sure. You would walk in my bedroom right now, and then you would walk right the fuck out and never talk to me again. <laughs> you would see that the mine mat, too, mine you, too. You would see the mattress is pretty much just sitting on the floor, no bed frame. You would love the blackout curtain I've managed to erect. <laughs> I took a fucking tarp and thumbtacked it over my window because I don't I was want... actually expecting duct tape. I'm disappointed. She, yeah, he had duct tape up there for a long time. Yeah, come so, on. yeah, yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, come on, mm. give me a little more respect than I'm that. I'm sorry, Danny. I'm um, sorry. I, there's a bottle I urinate in most nights because he, I don't feel like walking down the hallway. He doesn't like job. losing the sl He doesn't like the sleep mm. disturbance of getting up to pee. So, I and he's well hydrated. hydrated. He's well hydrated. He drinks a lot of water. See, I used that technique the other day, by the way. Thank you. In a bottle in my room. You're welcome. We shouldn't be teaching kids to do. I'm sure a large percentage of our audience is following suit it's a good point though doctor it is tough i got to imagine there's a lot of frustration within the community of professional successful women yeah. there's got to be a lot of intimidated fucking dudes who just don't even have the courage to make the first approach or they do and they strike up a conversation in the bar oh is that was that a doctor before your name are you are you accurately conjugating verbs after this many whiskey neats see you later I'm going to go talk to the bimbo over in the corner with the ASU sweater. Well, first of all, I drink my scotch straight, oh, wow. and it's only single malt. Okay. Yeah. But, wow. yeah. Even worse. <laughs> you try to talk scotch with me, my head's going to spin. Like, uh, the cranberry vodka, please, and whatever she wants. 
so funny. Yeah. Is that a, that's a frustration though with your, was that a frustration for you in the past guys being intimidated? Sure. Okay. Yeah. It is a frustration because I think, you know, so many guys think they've got to be like millionaires and mm-hmm. totally ripped and have all this stuff going for them in order to date someone who has their professional life together. But you know, lots of people are professional and they don't make a ton of money. So what's important to most women, and I work with a lot of um, successful women who are doing their thing and we all have the same complaints. And the thing is, all we really want is somebody who is going to be attuned to us, somebody who's going to be respectful, somebody who wants to have fun and be adventurous, Mm -hmm. and somebody who isn't afraid of our success. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's willing to stand right next to us and say, Get your shit, girl. Do it. Right. And if I can help you, I will. And, and if you can help me, you will. And that's how we roll. I love and it. it's really challenging because I think a lot of men have this idea that they need to be, um, you know, more wealthy, more successful, mm-hmm. taller, all the things. And it's just like, knock it off. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, I, I know you're in a relationship, but that list you just rattled off, that's Austin to it, too. <laughs> This is a guy who will not be intimidated by your professional success. <laughs> that, he will take you to play RuneScape for up to 18 <laughs> hours at a time. Hell he yeah. has a trailer he lives in in his parents' backyard. Right. And he produces our podcast for $38 per session. Yes. From so, each of you. From each of us, yes. 75 bucks. <laughs> but, yeah, he... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's got to be a challenge. I, I'm, I'm not jealous. Uh, going through a divorce, too, that's, I'm, I don't want to talk about that or anything, but that's got to be something that has helped you. I mean, it's, it's character building. Yeah, Would you, of course. Yeah, that's I learned cr- a lot about myself being married and getting divorced. There's mm-hmm. no shame in ending a relationship that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Were, you able to, were you able to snatch any of that first husband's dough? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want any. Oh, nice. <laughs> this she has probably a, has. She was making all the dough. It's very likely. Mm-hmm. Hey, this has been a great podcast. Absolutely. I think I think it's a good natural place to wrap up. Mm-hmm. I had a really fun time. That was one of the funnier podcasts. That was I can absolutely recall. phenomenal. I, uh, I must say that we we have to have Dr. Kate on again sometime. I'd be honored. This was super fun. I, absolutely. I blast. really really enjoyed it. She wants to pitch anything. Uh, you know, anything you want to put out there? Yeah. For, thanks for asking. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just got accepted into the TikTok creator. Uh, creator creative learning fund I can't even say it so mm-hmm. that's starting tomorrow that's so follow me on TikTok at Dr. Kate Balistrieri so mm, help absolutely. me blow that up sure I'm also on Instagram same place yep. and then my website Modern Intimacy has a lot of great resources for people who want to learn about sex intimacy mental health and all of the ways that those things are woven together and mm-hmm. of course um, you know the clinicians who I work with in my practice and I are happy to consult and help people mm-hmm. find their way even if it's not with us we're happy to find you Happy to help you find a clinician that is a good fit for you. Absolutely. I, I will be using some of these resources myself. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll link uh, her uh, Instagram and her TikTok in the description. I'm sure all yeah. these animals are going to flood the Oh, area. yeah, they are. <laughs> Don't listen to anything they say unless, you know, I mean, flood if they, if there's, there's a guy in there who might need help. So, you yeah. know. But, but, yeah, they're, yeah, please be be nice. Guys. <laughs> all right. <laughs> They're animals. They're great people, though. All yeah, right. I are. think we're going to wrap it up. I had a lot of fun, guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.